You're listening to the Clear Creek Resources Podcast from Clear Creek Community Church. To hear more, check out clearcreekresources.org. Well, Dave and Carla, thanks so much for being here. It's great to have you guys on the Clear Creek Resources Podcast. Thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. I'm excited. Um, Got some cool like opportunities and stuff that I've heard about that you guys have gotten to um, take part in. And so I'm super excited to talk about that. But before we get there, I think really like we're in the middle of this, you know, table talk series. We're a couple weeks in now. We're talking a lot about um, kind of the tagline, making meals missional. And so we're talking about gathering around the table, but really it's like, we're talking about welcoming people in, we're talking about using what you have. And so it's really more about this idea of hospitality than it is about specifically food, you know, that's kind of the representation. And so, um, you know, as a, as an elder, as people who have been involved for a long time and people who are you know, on mission with Clear Creek. What does that look like for you guys? Just this idea of hospitality and using that for kind of the kingdom. Well, hospitality for us, um, you know, if if we go back 15 years, getting pushing 20, uh, when we first started to talk about spiritual gifts, we were both a little surprised, um, but subsequently confirmed that two of our spiritual gifts together happen to be hospitality and generosity. Mm. Um, and we've always felt like hospitality kind of incorporated generosity, yeah, honestly. Sure. You know, a working definition for us with regard to hospitality has always been the uh, friendly and generous service to others um, or reception of others in the service of Christ. So... Uh, you take the friendly and generous part of that, um, receiving others in the service of Christ. That's just kind of always been something that was natural mm-hmm. to us, which is what you usually see uh, when folks demonstrate their spiritual gifts. It's just kind of this this effortless ability mm-hmm. to do those kind of things. And Carla's particularly blessed at this kind of stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, it kind of started off, you know, in neighborhood events, neighborhood mm-hmm. potlucks. Everybody would kind of gather around the cul-de-sac or mm-hmm. big family holidays. Yeah. There was always at our house, and that was something that we loved to do, and um, it came very easy, yeah. and it gave us joy. Just hosting people mm-hmm. and, yeah. And so when cool. we started at Clear Creek and we... You know, had our small groups, and we'd have small group stuff at our house, or mm-hmm. gatherings at our house, or get-togethers. It just um, really solidified that—that that those are our spiritual gifts, and how we were able to use those mm-hmm. to serve others. Yeah. And in the meantime, um, hopefully, spreading you know Christ's love to yeah. other people, creating conversation. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so I was I was going to ask the question of just like, you know, we can kind of we can um, use hospitality for like discipleship kind of opportunities, but also for evangelism opportunities. And so how have you guys seen those two directions kind of play out? I know you mentioned small group. Yeah. We um, like to gather people um, at our house or we've had different properties that we've invited people to from all across the board, from people Mm -hmm. from church to people far from church. Yeah just to get together to meet and mingle and talk and realize that if you're a Christian and you go to church, your head's not spinning around. Mm -hmm. And if you don't go to church and you're not a Christian, your head's not spinning around. Mm -hmm. We're just all people. We're all sinners. And so the the part of that and being able to draw each other together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it it got to be uh, more intentional to do these mashup type events. Uh, mm-hmm. At the beginning, it was it was more organic. We'd talk about events after they were over with, and we were like going, yeah, it was really cool to see uh, people from our world that were not part of the church mm-hmm. uh, interacting with and getting to know, and we'd catch people having conversations that had ever met each other. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it'd be like, man, I never thought I'd see those two people (laughs) having a conversation. I mean, people that never met each other and from two completely different um, 
worldviews, mm-hmm. having earnest conversations with each other. And I think from that point on, it really became an intentional part of uh, events or gatherings that we would we would host. We would really try to be intentional about. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could stack the place with friends that we have here at church. But uh, it was really about being intentional, about making sure that we had uh, invited at least a lot of folks that weren't part of our church world Mm -hmm. so that they could meet people. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, that word intentionality gets thrown around a lot. And so I'm always curious just to hear what people say about it is like, how, how do you guys, you know, try to be intentional about what you're doing? And we kind of like have these hopes that we kind of hope happen, but how do you make it not come off as like... Hey, we invited you here and we have an agenda, you know, that sort of thing. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Because we don't do that, really. (laughs) No, no. I mean, we circle around live music a lot, Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much something everybody enjoys. Right. Um, So the artists aren't necessarily Christian artists, Mm -hmm. um, but they're good people. And I think we know most of them personally. And so feel pretty confident of inviting our friends mm-hmm. um, and just hoping that conversations will be sparked or maybe something from the stage is said because most of the people we have come are storytellers. Mm-hmm. And um, that always sparks good conversations. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. Sure. And then, uh, and then, you know, and this isn't true just for us, obviously. Um, well, I hope it's not true just for us, but... Uh, we have our work world, mm-hmm. right? So we have people that we engage with at the office. And then we have other places that we spend time. For me, it's a lot of time at the hospital. Uh, we have our neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Carla has other groups of connection outside of the church. So uh, it's when we started to get more intentional about it, mm-hmm. uh, we would talk about, well, you know, who should we ask? You know, who should we at least make sure that we've extended an invitation to? We want to make sure that we include some folks from this area and some folks from this area and some folks from this area. And sometimes yeah. they show, sometimes they don't. And mm-hmm. Sometimes they engage and sometimes they don't. Right. But uh, the invitation's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, just just opening doors, doing our part to mm-hmm. open doors to that kind of stuff. That part's intentional now. Yeah. That kind of creating. The situation for the safe maybe, place. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. So, um, you know, we've talked about the live music thing a little mm-hmm. bit already, and we're we're getting we're getting into that. And so, uh, you know, kind of this whole series is about you know offering what you have, what you're already doing, offering the things you're already interested in that you kind of lean towards. And bringing people into that, um, maybe maybe they're already in that, but connecting with them in some way. And so, you know, for you guys, you, you've mentioned live music a couple of times. And so, how how have, how has that played out for you guys? Kind of um, inviting people into that world with you and making some of those connections. Mm-hmm. I think it started um, several years ago. We had a place in the country, and it was about a two-hour drive. So we mm-hmm. would um, have people out for a picnic once or twice mm-hmm. a year and provide um, some good music that Dave would find and just being outside and families being together and getting mm-hmm. to visit people you may not have seen in a while. Yeah. So that was really cool. And we thought, well, how can we bring that closer to home? So several years we partnered with Teresa and Greg Vinsel at mm-hmm. Tad Acres. And you talk about somebody who knows a lot about hospitality and generosity mm-hmm. Man, they should be sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> the two of them, I mean, it was a pleasure to work with them. They but go us ahead. A lot. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're awesome. Um, we, we partnered with them and kind of did the same thing in a building. Mm-hmm. And then when that was over, there was a few years um, of just kind of thinking, well, what, what, what does our next phase look like? How could we do that? How could we replicate that? Yeah. And I think thinking through the next couple of years, there really was no replicating it. I mean, that was a very special place Mm -hmm. and very, I I think our relationship with Greg and Teresa is very special and that just couldn't be something that was duplicated. Mm -hmm. So we, um, probably five years ago, we bought a little bit of property, five acres in Santa Fe. We were going to build storage stuff on it. That'd be Santa Fe, Texas. Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you for the clarification. (laughs) We just kind of sat on it for a little while. And then, um, 
I guess about six months before COVID, we decided to maybe start with a pad and built, dug a pond. And mm-hmm. we thought, well, we can do this and have people it, have our gatherings out there. That would be mm-hmm. fun. And the more we had thought about it, we kind of have really penciled in every part of Santa Fe, mm-hmm. just things that we have um, in our hearts envisioned of how we would use it mm-hmm. to glorify his kingdom and what could what could we use it um, to, to have people gather and the best of the property that we had in the country, we wanted that on five acres. Mm. So um, we started that, and it was a very slow process. Mm. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, that whole concept evolved. You know, initially, uh, it was just going to be a storage place, and then it was going to be a storage place and, you know, what people have come to call kind of a barn dominium. <laughs> and then, um, then Carla was like, well, wouldn't it be cool if... Uh, you know, we created enough space to be able to do um, some gathering type events. And so the building kept growing. You know, it started mm-hmm. off as this manageable place and then it went to semi manageable. And now it's completely unmanageable. <laughs> I mean, it's like, but it's just a second home for us, mm-hmm. is what it's turned out to be. I mean, there's a place to sleep out there, but we have a huge den, mm. which is not a den at all. It's <laughs> actually just. It's wired for sound, and we can record out there and oh, cool. host uh, events out there. And we've we we're now starting to use it for our uh, music events too. Mm-hmm. We really felt led in um, 2020, beginning of 2020, when COVID hit, mm-hmm. and we quit working for a little while. Mm. Um, we felt like God leading us. Maybe this is something we should should get on to mm-hmm. start working on a little mm-hmm. faster than we had anticipated and mm-hmm. maybe we could use it for the church to meet in smaller groups mm-hmm. stuff like that and so that kind of um accelerated uh, thing, yeah, yeah accelerated the plans a little bit um but I've, i feel like looking back god's hands were all in it mm-hmm. i mean it's it's his provisions yeah yeah for sure so so what all does this place involve it's like a it's like a music venue place, but... Yeah, I mean, I um, it is a music venue, mm-hmm. but, you know, we always uh, hasten to add that it, it, it's not it's not like a business. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's not for rent, mm-hmm. you know. It's our house. Yeah. Well, it's just a weird house. <laughs> we've talked okay. about it being an extension of our home. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had a wedding out there that got canceled during COVID. Okay. We've had a CD release party. We've mm-hmm. had a memorial service for somebody who passed. Mm-hmm. A couple birthdays. Mm-hmm. Um, retirement party. Um, retirement party, some music <laughs> events. So yeah. we've had a, the NAV retreat for East 96, a yeah. women's event and a men's event out there. Mm-hmm. So it's... Um, and what a cool use of space. Uh, yeah. It's, Versatile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really... It's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So... Um, what kind of opportunity, I mean, obviously it's a variety of opportunities, Mm. but what kind of opportunities with building relationships has this place kind of opened up for you guys and that maybe you wouldn't have had other places? Um, well, it's really just been so far, it's really just been an extension of, I would say it's just been an extension of what we had always intended our gatherings to be. Mm-hmm. So, uh, even when we have events, um, uh, Carla had mentioned a retirement, uh, uh, celebration that we had out there or the wedding that we had out there, or even the memorial service that we had out there. Mm-hmm. It's interesting the the venue itself always provokes conversations about, mm-hmm. cause it's weird yeah. <laughs> that somebody would, would create a space like this mm-hmm. and they, it's not unusual for folks to ask about the story behind the mm-hmm. place, right? Yeah. Um, so that always uh, enables us to launch into conversations about why we do what we do and why we do it the way we do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and, you know, that's that's beyond just the ability that it gives people to engage with people that they don't already know. So, mm-hmm. And I think giving us the space... Mm-hmm. It allows for bigger gatherings. Yeah. You know, um, it's comfortable. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel crowded or um, in their space outside. It just feels peaceful. Mm. Yeah. 
That's cool. Mm-hmm. And so how much intentionality was there when you guys were kind of dreaming all of this up and talking about what it could be to like, hey, these are all the different kind of events, or did that just kind of happen organically? I think after we decided it wasn't going to be just a shop, mm-hmm. <laughs> it got very intentional. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. All the way up to the, the apartment upstairs mm-hmm. and, um, you know, having bathrooms, mm-hmm. enough bathrooms, and it, it, just the comfort level. Yeah. For having a large amount of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really cool. I, I agree with that. I, I think it got intentional real quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I yeah. think uh, having said that, I think um, that God's opened our eyes to even more ways that it could be used beyond what we ever dreamed it could be used mm-hmm. for, honestly. Um, right. And some of that was pushed by COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that was the, you know, one of the few silver linings that came out of that season mm-hmm. was... When we, when we weren't comfortable gathering in large groups, mm-hmm. or weren't comfortable gathering in small groups in small spaces, um, the Santa Fe property helped us in that. It, I'll mm-hmm. give you an example. Uh, it it enabled our personal small group mm-hmm. to move off of Zoom mm-hmm. really quick. Yeah, because people including us, weren't necessarily comfortable with 16 people in a living room yeah. uh, during that season. Right. But there were so could, many barriers at that time. Yeah, yeah but yeah. we were comfortable doing 16 people seated in pairs six feet apart from each other. So, mm-hmm. I mean, and that's completely different when you're right. able to still engage face-to-face but still maintain what everybody felt like mm-hmm. was appropriate social distancing. So from that standpoint, mm-hmm. now we, there's no way we could have seen that coming. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, what's, I don't know if you can give me like another example or two, but what's something that's happened maybe as a result of having the space of opening it up for people to use that you were like, man, we hope something like this would happen, but we didn't, we didn't know. Have, have you had anything like that yet? Any stories of just like, man, that was cool. Like, <laughs> um, well, one thing recently that happened, um, one of the electricians who was part of the ground up, mm-hmm. um, and he helped um, Jason Barnes, and he was a good friend of Jason's. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to know Troy very, very well, mm-hmm. and um, he he knows every nook and cranny of that place, and recently he, he was diagnosed with cancer and passed very oh, suddenly. Wow. And so they were able to have his service out there mm-hmm. because his daughter um, said he loved that place. He, you know, he was there so much mm-hmm. and he was such a part of it. Mm-hmm. And I think that that we didn't talk about faith a whole lot with Troy, but I know that between us and Jason Barnes and some of the other guys that were working out there, it was mm-hmm. part of conversation. Right. And um, I know that he was a believer when he passed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't know that that was, I don't know that that was the story the whole time. Mm -hmm. That was was very exciting. Yeah, that is really awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, and and Jason did share that Troy had many conversations with him about why would somebody do something like this? So it, Mm -hmm. it, it actually opened opportunities, not for us, but for JB Mm -hmm. to have conversations with Troy about why faith is important. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, that's a great example. That so I hope we, yeah. I hope we know more, and there probably are more. I just yeah. I'm not thinking about them. Um, I don't perseverate on them. I think that we <laughs> we have these, and we provide the space and opportunity and people, and and God, God does His thing. Yeah. I mean, you would ask Dave about. David said, we didn't imagine this beyond our wildest dreams Yeah, because it was never a dream. I, I would have never thought we would have something like this. But looking back, it's exactly God prepared us for the timing mm-hmm. to be able to do this. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing how he does that because yeah. we we're kind of talking before we started rolling here. It's like, you know, God used us in different ways at different times mm-hmm. in our lives. And so it's so cool for you guys to be in this in this spot and yep. in this have this opportunity in front of you and then be able to say, okay, yeah, let's do it, you know? Because we haven't yeah. always been. Mm-hmm. We haven't always been able to be generous in this type of way. Mm-hmm. You know, growing up, I wasn't, I didn't grow up in a generous house. I yeah. didn't know what that looked like. Mm-hmm. Um, so when Dave and I started hosting family events even before we came to church. And I didn't realize that's what that was. Um, It brought me joy. 
mm-hmm. to serve others. It brought us joy to, to open our house and our home and whatever we had. Mm-hmm. And so then when we started coming to Clear Creek and we do the personality profiles and learning the, <laughs> what is our spiritual gifts, it right. was like, well, you know, yeah, it makes, well, that makes yes, sense. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so God takes your spiritual gifts and he puts them together with things that you're interested in mm-hmm. and combines that with your resources and this is kind of what he laid out for us mm-hmm. right now. So yeah, I think there's it's it's so easy for people to fall into this misconception of there is a very specific type of generosity mm-hmm. out there that I have to do if I want to be considered generous or if I want to live into that call to be generous, but it's like like you said, you know, a lot of times it's like whatever you're already doing, whatever you're already interested <laughs> in um you know, there's some qualifiers on that, but for the most part, what yeah. you're already doing, what you're already interested in, God can use that to connect you with people that, you know, like you said, it's not somebody you're going to run into at church, but you might run into them at a concert yep. or something like that. That's so, right. And that's so cool. we, we could say the same thing about hospitality, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, there, there's no cookie cutter for hospitality either. Mm-hmm. Um, this is our version of hospitality. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have people that, you know, after a hurricane, take a family into their house for weeks or months. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a kind of hospitality that is different than the hospitality that uh, we're gifted at. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody would question that that is (laughs) friendly, generous reception of people, Mm -hmm. you know, in the service of Christ. There's no question that that's a demonstration of hospitality. Mm -hmm. But that's different than our version of hospitality, just Mm -hmm. because we're gifted differently. Yeah. So how how do you think, you know, if you're somebody who's looking for opportunities, how do you coach someone to see those and to be able to like kind of step into them? A specific to generosity or hospitality? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To both kind of just like, you know, the using what you have sort of mantra. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, I think we're all called to be uh, engaged in hospitality, just like we're all called to be engaged in generosity. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't have to be a spiritual gift for you to participate in that. Right. right. Um, but the degree uh, and the ease with which you engage with that mm-hmm. are going to be different yeah. depending on your gifting, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, serving someone generously and in a friendly manner, I mean, that, that, that can be so many of the service opportunities that we do. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's hospitable in a way. Yeah. Um, uh, we've got friends that, that serve at a women's shelter on a regular basis, cooking for them and providing food for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in fact, we had a video in one of our services about somebody that was doing that here recently. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's an extraordinary demonstration of hospitality. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't require, you know, inviting somebody into your home mm-hmm. or hosting a large number of people yeah. at one of your homes, you know. Mm-hmm. I agree with Dave, but I also feel like um, on a smaller scale, yeah. Serving somebody um, that you know maybe is having a hard day. Mm. If you're in group with them, checking in with them, mm-hmm. um, taking a meal by, taking mm-hmm. d- d- drinks and beaver nuggets by somebody who's not feeling well. Yeah. You know, we did that. It, made, it was a hit. Yeah. I love the beaver nuggets. Shout out. That's so great. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, recently, my, um, our son and, and daughter in law had a baby, and his n- neighbor was mowing his yard, mm. and he mowed our son's front yard. Oh, cool. I mean, that was. That's nothing, mm-hmm. you know. It's not always something I would think about. I yeah. think about, I see it, and then I'm like, oh, I should do that. Mm-hmm. But um, if you had a lawnmower, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to be grand gestures. Yeah, it can really just be reaching out or um, somebody's in the grocery store, and you can tell they're having trouble, or their kid is screaming like a banshee. <laughs> you know, just like, hey, I've been there. Mm-hmm. Hang on, hang in there. Right. You know. Yeah, so much of it feels like when you when you get into these conversations, it's like so much of it is just wrapped around seeing people and relating to them mm-hmm. and kind of just showing them that you do value them as a mm-hmm. person, you know, like you're a human being and I get that and <laughs> I want to treat you that way. Yeah, yeah. like, you know, uh, so and especially being in the medical field. I mean, it seems like you guys, like, you probably know that better than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and I'll tell you, you know, the... Uh, stories like uh, uh, th- stories like the Santa Fe uh, venue, mm-hmm. um, stories like that cut both ways. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things where um, there's a part of 
Carla and I, and I'll speak for her, but there's a part of Carla and I that's like, man, I don't want to go and talk about that, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. uh, because it, it it feels like the story's about us. Mm-hmm. The story's not really about us. Mm-hmm. And the other part is it's, it's kind of a, a larger demonstration of hospitality. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm always a little worried that it would discourage people from engaging in hospitality because they can't do it on that scale or mm-hmm. they don't feel comfortable doing it on that scale mm-hmm. um, or taking somebody into their house after a hurricane for six months. I can't do it on that scale. So hospitality yeah. really must not be for me. And I don't think that's true at all. Mm-hmm. You know, I would encourage people to explore you know, bite-sized, manageable, regular efforts at hospitality, Mm -hmm. you're serving somebody, getting on a meal train, becoming part of a go-op that's taking care of other people. I think that's, Mm -hmm. I mean, look, as long as it's something that's done in the service of others to the glory of God, I think that's a great demonstration of hospitality. Mm -hmm. That's a good word. I appreciate you saying that. Um, as I think people do fall into that comparison game a lot of times and mine looks different than, than yours and so it must not be as good or something like oh, that. Yeah. I'll tell you, the first thing when Dave told me we were um, asked to do this podcast, I'm like, mm, no, we don't need to do that. Because <laughs> to me it felt like we're just talking about Santa Fe and that kind of stuff and it really has nothing to do with that building. Yeah, It has to do with what Dave and I have been task with managing right now Mm -hmm. in this season of our life and holding it very loosely and prayerfully considering what God wants us to do with that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you both right now. That's why we asked you to do it because we appreciate the spirit with which you guys do things and, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. We all know that. Um, We appreciate the way that you guys are being an example in that. And so that was one of the reasons why we wanted to have this conversation. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so one of my favorite stories in the Bible is uh, the story when Jesus feeds the 5,000 and um, there's the, you know, the disciples are all talking about the problem of how are we going to feed all these people? Jesus wants to feed all these people. Where are we going to find the the resources to buy the bread and do all this stuff? And there's this little boy that says, hey, I have some fish (laughs) and some bread. And, you know, to anybody else, they'd be like, why would you even Mm -hmm. bring that up? But Jesus sees it and says, I can work with that. And, uh, you know, we know the rest of the story. He feeds 5,000 people, blesses the meal. And so I always feel like the spirit of that little boy is such a great picture of what it is to be hospitable as a Christian. Of, I know this is probably not enough, but it's what I got. And you you can use it. And so um, I just always appreciate that that um, the story for that reason, it reminds me of that. And you guys remind me of that. And, and having this conversation of talking about the sizes, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just like what you got is, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so I guess maybe, maybe to wrap it up, maybe mm-hmm. to wrap up the whole conversation, what, what would you guys say to somebody who's like, okay, I mean, I want to do it. What's my first step? I would, I would encourage somebody to, um, figure out what their gifts are, if they haven't already. Mm -hmm. Because you may think that you're gifted at this area, and you're not. (laughs) And that's fine. You can still Mm -hmm. make it work, but it it won't be easy, and it probably won't bring you joy, and you probably won't stick with it, Mm -hmm. you know? So, um, like, I'm not gifted in teaching. I don't, uh, uh, like, it. Or prophecy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But... I love being on the other end and welcoming people Mm. into that, Yeah, you know. So I would encourage somebody to figure out their gifts, either take one of the personality tests or visit with, um, of course, someone in your small group, if you're in small group, which I would Mm. encourage everybody to be in. Um, It's Mm life-changing. And... Um, or somebody that knows you, that knows you well, mm-hmm. you know, just have an honest conversation with them. Yeah. That's what I would say. It's, it, I think it may be easier, but to start with something you think you're gifted at and that you mm-hmm. enjoy. Yeah. Um, it may take the uncomfortableness out of it. Right, right. But Dave mentioned there's so many opportunities, especially this season in mm-hmm. our area to get involved big or small. Right, for sure. And it always gives people joy I say always. I, I would. I think an argument could be made that it always brings people joy 
uh, to serve someone else, Mm -hmm. you know, especially to serve somebody else uh, in the name of Christ. So, um, you know, Carla's absolutely right. If, if you're, if you're, if you have a spiritual gift for generosity or hospitality, and we're talking about hospitality particularly, but if that's something, um, where your heart is, then, uh, just like all the other spiritual gifts, I I would run at that really hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would find ways that you can engage with people and, and, and you're going to know when you see it, um, whether that's getting involved in one of the go ministries that, uh, works with providing meals or providing services to folks in need, um, getting involved in areas of service, uh, in the church. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the, um, areas of the church that, uh, renders hospitality to folks uh, in support of one of the services. Um, And then just looking for opportunities that you have to serve other people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So good. Cool. Well, Dave, Carla, thank you for sharing just a little bit of your lives with us and your wisdom and your words. We appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Our pleasure. Thanks, John. Thanks. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If you haven't yet, make sure that you hit subscribe down below and check out clearcreekresources.org where we have videos, books, and sermons on there as well as our audio podcast. Thanks for watching.